God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Shall I do it one more time? Okay. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. 2 Timothy 1, 7. I wanted to share something which encouraged me from this week's memory verse. The first part of this verse says that God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but he's given us a spirit of power. And I want to share a little bit of my experience with that this week. It was Tuesday evening. I was at my office and I took out my Bible because I had to prepare for the sharing Tuesday night. And I was just holding the Bible right here next to my next to my face. And then one of the vice presidents at my company came and walked by to talk to me about something. And as he was talking to me, my hand slowly just went down towards my lap and I finished the conversation and that was it. And as I was going home, I was thinking to myself, well, why, why didn't I do that? Why, why didn't I just hold the Bible right here? Maybe he would have seen it. Maybe he would have said, hey, is that a Bible? And maybe we could have had some conversation come out of it. But nothing happened. And so I was really disappointed Tuesday evening. Then come Wednesday, and I was sitting on the shuttle to, to go to work. And again, I was reading my Bible. And this time I was reading Luke chapter 22. And this is the story when Jesus told Peter that Peter would deny Jesus three times. And I really appreciated what Jesus said to Peter. He said, Peter, after you've turned back, go and strengthen your brothers. And I thought, wow. This is someone who just denied Jesus. And if Jesus forgave him, that's already pretty good. But Jesus doesn't just forgive him. He uses Peter as an instrument in his hand to strengthen others. And I thought, what a wonderful God we have. And so as I was reading that passage, suddenly someone to the right of me across the aisle, this lady, she looked at me and said, hey, is that a Bible in your hand? I'm like, yes, <laughs> this is a Bible in my hand. And we had a short conversation and that was it. And I was so amazed that the exact area where I failed on Monday, or failed on Tuesday, the next day, the Lord gave me a chance to, to do it over again, so to speak. And I've been riding this visa shuttle for five, six years. No one has ever said anything about the Bible on my lap, except for this one time. And so this lesson really showed me something about God's heart. God is an extremely, extremely kind God. God is an extremely, extremely merciful God who's willing to give us second chances. And God is a God who is willing, so eager to help us to be bold in the areas in which we're timid. And so that's what encouraged me from my experience this week, that truly God does not give us a spirit of timidity, but he gives us a spirit of power. The next part of this verse talks about love. And I like the way that power and love are put next to each other. I'm reminded of what we've been taught at church about the, the skeletons. If you remember, Brother Zach told us that if we have a lot of truth in our lives, it's like these skeletons with a lot of bones. And if people look at us, they get scared and they run away. But if we have love, it's like having flesh that covers those skeletons. And when people see us, then they'll be attracted to us and we can be effective in the way we share with them. And so in the same way, I'm reminded that God does not give us a spirit of timidity, but he gives us not only power, but also love, so that the combination of those two forms a person with both bones and also flesh, so that when we talk to people, it's effective in the way we speak to them. So that was another encouragement for me as well. The last part of this verse talks about discipline. And I remember what we learned in the Through the Bible series. Brother Zach was telling us that unless we're disciplined, we will not be able to finish the will of God in our lives. And it reminded me a lot of what we've been learning about in, in Sunday school. So with the Sunday school children, we've been reading Pilgrim's Progress. And right now, we are at the point in the story where the pilgrims have come to Vanity Fair. And Vanity Fair is a place that the enemy had set up on the way to the celestial city. And what is in Vanity Fair is a lot of entertainment, a lot of fun things, anything you want is in Vanity Fair. And the whole purpose of Vanity Fair was to distract these pilgrims from going all the way to the celestial city. So it was a reminder to me that unless I'm disciplined with my life, I'm basically stuck 
at Vanity Fair, especially in a day and age where there's so much interesting news articles we can watch. There's so many interesting YouTube videos. There's so much social media and messages that come to us. Unless I'm careful with that, it's going to distract me from my goal, and I won't be able to finish God's will for my life. So these are some of the things that encourage me from this week's memory verse, and I just wanted to share that today. Good afternoon, family. Remember verse Second Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. So this week's uh, memory verse gave me some uh, thoughts and I want to share uh, that with you. So, <clears throat> In this short verse, Holy Spirit teaches me a couple of things I have to participate, um, practice in my life. And Jesus said in Matthew 7.24, Everyone who hears these words of mine and eyes on them is a wise man. Holy Spirit tells me, Thomas, do not be timid. That is, do not be coward or shy or fearful. Because I see in Revelation 21.8, the cowardly, the timid people are first in the list that face the second death. I see a warning to me in Luke 9.26. Whoever is ashamed or timid or shy or covered of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Here in the memory verse, I see one negative aspect that is timidity and the three positive facts to con uh, counteract or um, overcome that. Number one, power. Uh, Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. Uh, Luke 9 1. Again in Acts 1, uh, Jesus said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. When the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me, my timidity vanishes away. Then number two, John 13, 35 says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So I am challenged to love Jesus Christ supremely and love my um, love one another and love even my enemies. Included that I have to love my wife, my children and my grandchildren. Number three, discipline. In 1 Corinthians 9.27, Apostle Paul says, But I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Here I learn that I have to discipline my eyes, my tongue, my stomach, that is my eating habit, my sleep, my time, my entertainment, etc. So I pray for total victory over the sin of timidity and being led by power and love and discipline. Praise the Lord. To Timothy 1 7, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of love, of power, of love, and of a sound and discipline. Um, uh, Thomas Hobbes was a person who observed and wrote about governments and how they should run. And he said uh, that people fight mainly for three reasons. One, uh, because out of competition, two, diffidence, and three, glory. 
So you'll fight if um, uh, if it's for competition, it's to make yourself master over somebody else. If it's out of shyness, it'll be to keep yourself safe and secure. And lastly, if for glory, it'll be if somebody doesn't smile at you or something. So uh, what I've learned uh, in this past week, and I can testify, is that when I'm in God's will, I have great boldness. Um, and when I'm not in His will, I other people can get hurt too. So um, I'm just trying to remember. Like Brother Wenhai said that uh, when I I had a situation, or I can be in a situation where I can be have fear, and then because I'm not in God's will, but then I'm in God's will, and that fear completely vanquishes and things turn around like 360. So, um, so yeah, I think I just wanted I just want to thank God for that that. He really is able to replace fear with boldness. Um, and he, God gave me peace about uh, what I should do uh, concerning, should I talk to this person, etc. And instead of being fearful, um, instead I just, he was able to help me to even go after the person many times and face them many times. Uh, so uh, I think... I thank God for that, for the peace that he gave me. And he assured me that now is the time to speak. Um, and he helped me by giving me boldness and no timidity. Thank you. Second Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. So uh, I actually wanted to share a very similar word that the knowing that I'm in the will of the Lord has been the thing that's probably given me the most boldness and freedom from timidity. I've uh, naturally, I struggle, have struggled with uh, being a kind of a fearful, timid person, but uh, I've seen so much confidence come when I hear from the Lord about certain things. And he says, this is the way to go. That I could step forward with so much boldness, freedom from, well, if anything happens, the, the consequences are in his hands now, because this is what he told me, the way he told me to go. There's a lot of verses. Uh, First John has a couple of them. One is First uh, John three twenty one. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. First John five fourteen. This is a confidence we have if we ask anything according to His will. Uh, he was, so it's, there's something that ties in um, boldness and freedom from fear with the, um, being in His will, and it's just very similar to what we heard today from Jeremy that Jesus he persisted, and he uh, heard the heard from the father himself and then he was able to step forward to the cross with boldness and uh it's very similar i think to the the confidence you feel putting on a clean shirt that's come out of the dryer versus one that's sitting on the bed that you're not sure about uh i, I heard of a laundry ad that uh, the uh, a slogan if it's doubtful it's dirty <laughs> so <laughs> not sure just throw it in the hamper um but you have confidence if you know something is clean and you feel good wearing it. And so um, I've seen that. It's very true in our life with God. Even in the hard situations when God, when I've heard from God and he says, go this way, I go forward with so much joy, even in a hard situation. The joy is there, the, the boldness, the freedom from fear and timidity, even though there's naturally stuff in my flesh that's fearful and timid. What I've heard from the Lord, there's something there. So that's my uh, goal to stay in God's will. And that's how I can be bold. Uh, in, in this life.